Hi, and welcome to Assets Tech Tips. So today's video is how to, from very beginning to very end, encrypt your Windows 10 notebook using Veracrypt, doing a full disk encryption. I've been getting loads of emails going, Dan, make us one video beginning to end with basically step by step everything you need to, to do to get the job done. There's been a lot of comments and a lot of mails to me where people are having difficulties understanding that Veracrypt does not support GPT partition tables. So that's what we're going to basically tackle today. So like I said, the plan is one video, everything you need to get your system encrypted. The issue is that you can't really get Windows 8.1 notebooks when you buy a new notebook. Most new machines now come with Windows 10 installed, and Windows 10 by default has a GPT partition table. Veracrypt doesn't support full disk encryption on GPT yet. Adrasi did say he was going to implement the uh, the support for it, but he hasn't done it yet. He mentioned that like back in 2014, so this is why I'm making the video, so that all you guys out there on GPT with Windows 10 can get this done. So the solution to the problem is to convert your GPT partition to an MBR partition and uh, of course without losing any data or messing up your operating system. So what you need to do is first of all back up your important data. I can't express that enough. Those of you who don't do it, I warned you. Once you've got all your information backed up, fully cycle Windows updates. Keep doing it until it says there's no more Windows updates because the last thing you want is to do a shutdown during an FTE test and then have Windows updates pop up and start updating. It's nice to keep the process nice and clean and precise. Get your updates done so there's nothing interfering with the reboot process. Um, I want you to take a little bit of time and read this, okay? There are a million and one reasons why problems could occur. I have done many tests from GPT to MBR, from MBR back to GPT and back again. Um, on all of my tests I didn't have any issues. So you will minimize your risk of running into problems significantly if you follow my video to a T. Uh, however, even if you do, there is a very, very slim chance that you might run into problems. And if you do, it's not my fault. However, if you do run into problems, send me an email, assetscript at gmail.com, and I'll be very happy to sort you out. Do your research. One of the things you're going to need to know how to do is on your laptop or computer, how to switch from your UFEI EFI BIOS, oh, sorry, um, controller configuration to AHCI controller configuration. When you do a conversion from GPT to MBR and you do a restart, your system will crash. You'll get a blue screen of death. Um, a lot of people freak out about this. Don't freak out. It's fine. GPT will not boot on EFI. Sorry, GPT has to boot on EFI. GPT won't boot on AHCI. And when you switch from GPT to MBR, you must switch also to AHCI. So go into uh, YouTube and check your specific laptop model, how to get into the BIOS, and from your BIOS, how to switch your SATA controller from whatever mode it's on to AHCI. Uh, by default, the keys on most systems are either escape, F1, F2, or delete, but do your research and find out. All right, so let's rock and roll. Now, I have already got a virtual machine. I'm, do I'm using a virtual machine. Here it is here. Let me just pop it open. See, here, virtual machine. And the reason why I'm using a virtual machine is so that you guys can see my shutdown and restart procedure. There's no difference between this virtual machine and an actual machine, apart from my BIOS is a little bit simplified, or some, some might argue, actually, it might be a little bit more complicated, but it's different to what your BIOS will look like. That's why I say do your research on it. Otherwise, everything I do right here is exactly the same as your physical machine. Now, just to show you all that we're on the same page, I'm going to prove to you that we are on Windows 10 Pro. Windows 10 Pro. And I'm going to prove to you that my disk is GPT. Oops. 
Oops. So here you can see I've only got one disk. It's online, it's 80 gigs, and there's a star in GPT, meaning it's on the GPT partition table. For those of you who don't really understand what you're looking at, I suppose I can make it a little bit easier for you to understand with a better visual. So let's just open up Disk Manager. And we want to go to Properties, Volumes. There you go, GPT. So we're all on the same page. Windows 10, GPT, Veracrypt won't work. Step one, let's do the conversion. To convert from GPT to MBR, you need to get some kind of a, par a partitioning tool. I have already paid for my own partitioning tool. Here she is. You guys, if you don't have one, you'll need to get one. And the majority of them out there, you'll probably need to pay to do the conversion. All these tools are free to download. They'll do basic and simple partitioning things for you. But to actually convert from, from GPT to MBR or vice versa, you'll need to pay for the software. So go out and pay for it. If you don't want to pay for it, you can always illegally download it, which I really don't condone. So if you want to illegally download it, then I would strongly recommend that you follow the next steps, which I do not condone or agree with. Open up a browser, download a torrent program, uTorrent. First link, get for Windows, choose free letter download. Now that it's downloaded, install it. Next, next, yes, next, next, no, finish. uTorrent. For those of you who don't know how this works. Uh, this here is a downloading program for torrent files. You can get your torrent files from a torrent search engine. Basically it's the same as Google except it's for torrents and the website is t-o-r-r-e-n-t-z dot e-u. Search for whatever it is you're looking for. Movies, games, pictures, whatever. In this case we're looking for partitioning software. And here are all the softwares, the software torrents that you can download. Blue, people who are downloading. Green, people who are uploading. So let's take a look. This here looks like a, a good one. Now let's pick something that's got a couple more more options here this one 26 this here this looks good 26 people uploading one downloading so this should be nice and quick the more people uploading the quicker your download will be the less people downloading also the quicker it'll be you don't want these vice versa so select pick whatever one you want these are all the different sites that are hosting that torrent file and then choose to download open it in the application now check your country laws. Some countries don't allow downloading, some countries do. Your ISP will see what's going on. In my country, downloading's allowed, uploading's not. So I'm gonna go to Options, Preferences, Advanced UI, Extras, and I'm gonna change my upload to one. Click on Apply and OK. Then I'm gonna right click here and go to Bandwidth Allocation Set the upload limit to one, and now my upload is one kilobit. It's very slow. Look at the speed of that. It's bombing along. So uh, yeah, and that's that's how that works. If it's a little bit slower for you, you might need to open a port, and that's going to be a bit more complicated. So what you do is you set a port for the program. Go to preferences. Go to connection. Pick up here. There's one already in here, or you can just enter your own one. Hit apply and OK, and then you're going to need to port forward. And a good site to do that is portforward.com. In portforward.com, look for your router. Control and find. I have an Asus. 
So let's search for Asus. Oops. Let's go back up. There we are. Then you want to search for the model that you have. I have an RT hyphen AC eighty seven U. And now you're going to see pictures and oh no, sorry. Select any of these. It doesn't matter what you select. Utorn's not in the list, but the idea is all the same. So now you're going to see these little pictures, and these pictures are step by step what you need to see in order to assist you step by step with the way of port forwarding your system. So first, you need to have a static IP address. Right click on if you're using a cable. This is your symbol. If you're using Wi-Fi, it'll be a little Wi-Fi symbol. The steps are the same. Right click. Network and sharing. Ethernet. Details. And write down the IP address, the subnet mask, the default gateway, and your DNS server. Write it down. Open up a notepad. Run notepad. Write it down in notepad. Then go to properties. Scroll down to TCP IP4 properties and here change it to use the following and enter in the details you just wrote down click on OK apply and OK and then that IP address you wrote down mine is 100 just to show you oh sorry it's not it's 176 so then you just go 192 192.168.1.176 and then just follow the steps Google go to your router your router will be this here your default gateway log in what to click where to go and then this part here is basically just common sense you uh, don't need to put in these two figures just put in the port that you set so in this case the port was, what did we select? Preference, 60,000. So you enter in 60,000 here, 60,000 there, plus apply, and you port forwarded that port. And now your u torrent will be nice and quick. Once you've got the program downloaded, install it, and then we're able to move on. So I don't need this because I've already paid for it. So let's remove it and delete that. And here is my tool. Now we need to do the conversion. So all these tools, whatever one you select, they'll all pretty much be the same. You'll have a menu on the left and you'll probably see everything that you'll see from right clicking in the left hand side here. Or if you just right click and then you've got your option to select convert from GPT to MBR. So let's go ahead and do that now. Let's click on OK. Let's click on apply and proceed. Yeah. And our system will restart. Now, like I said earlier on, you're going to need to switch from EFEI, sorry, EFI to AHCI. The process for me is a little bit different to you guys. So my system's going to restart. Let me just close this down so you can properly see what's going to happen. And it will crash. You'll get a blue screen of death. My one here will look for alternative booting methods. So I'll just leave it so you can see. So here we are. It's not finding what it needs and it's looking for alternative things to boot and nothing's happening. So I need to change my system from, EFE, from EFI to AHCI. Now it's a, like I said, it's different for me than you guys because I'm using a virtual machine. So just bear with me. I'm going to speed through this process now. Okay, so I've switched my disk from EFI to AHCI 
and I have done a restart. Let me just refresh that screen a bit. Okay, so we'll boot it in. Let me just ah no, let's let's RDP into it instead. Yeah, let's close that down. Close details minimize. Okay, so we're back into our system and we're now logging in. And once we've logged in, I will show you that the disk is on an NBR partition table, the master boot record. Okay, let's do a quick check. And you see, there's no star here, which means we're NBR. And uh, let me show you the other way as well. Come on, open up. Oops, too quick. Okay, master boot record. So it's converted. Now, Barracrypt will work. The operating system is intact. Everything is hunky-dory. So the next step, Barracrypt, open up your browser if you don't already have it. Installed, I mean Barracrypt. And go to Vera. Barracrypt. Yeah, I want it to be default. Home, download. Okay, install. Yep. I do accept. Next, next, next. successfully installed I recommend that you donate it's great software so uh, it's a nice way of thanking Adrasi for all his hard work and keeping this legendary software up to date go ahead and donate I don't need to see the website um, let me just get rid of that because I don't need it on my VM Okay, so opening up Veracrypt. Now, we want to do full disk encryption. So the next step is to create a volume. Encrypt the system partition or the entire system drive. Click Next. We want Normal. Click Next. Now here, it doesn't really matter which one of these you select. Oh, of course, it, if this is a decision you'll need to uh, make yourself, my next steps will be exactly the same if you select this or if you select this. So my advice to you is to read these two carefully, understand them, and then continue on. If you've got more than one disk, you might want to change your option from one to the other. I've only got one disk and I want to encrypt the entire disk. So like a proper full disk encryption. Clicking next. Also, each step of this way, I do strongly recommend that you read all of the areas and understand what they're saying. 
Um, so for example, here is a good message. If you've got multiple disks in your system and they are set up in a RAID configuration, then you want to select no. If you don't and you've only got one disk, you can select yes. Regardless of what you select, this, the steps moving on will still be exactly the same. Basically what this is saying is if you've got additional partitions, do you want to encrypt all of the additional partitions or do you want to leave you know, important ones like the ones that contain your RAID configuration information? So moving on, it's doing a detection of any sectors. We have a single boot because I've only got one operating system installed. Here you can choose which algorithm you want. Of course, there are much stronger ones than AES, unless you're in the government or doing military, um, you might want to change. Otherwise, if you're just a normal home user working for, a, if it's a company notebook and you're you're doing, I don't know, like um, accounting, KPMG, uh, then AES should be fine. Just on a, another note, if you are working for the company and you're using nuclear launch codes or something really, really important, think very carefully about encrypting your system because if you do do full disk encryption and you forget your password, those codes are gone. There's no coming back from this. Not not unless you have, you know, a, a really, really super computer that has got ridiculous computing power. Um, there's, it's just difficult. So be careful. This is strong encryption. Create a good password. Understand what a good password is. A good password isn't password, lowercase, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. A password that's good is something that contains symbols, um, bigger letters, lower letters, numbers. Mix it up. The more you mix it up, the harder it is. If I've got a password up with all lowercase that contains 100 letters, that's simple for me to break. If I've got a password that contains eight letters that are big, small, with symbols and quotations and underlines and, and all sorts of strange characters, that's going to be an awful lot more difficult to, to crack. So understand what a good password is and what's not. There you go, that's exactly what I just said. Move your mouse around, get a nice random data hash, and then click next. Go, yep. Yeah. Okay. Ah, the rescue disk. Okay, so let's put our rescue disk onto the desktop. And let me explain to you. And let me just go. Res res rescue underscore disk dot ISO. ISO is the format for virtual CD. And just, just in case you didn't know that, if you don't put in ISO and you click on file and you click on next, it will create a file that won't be usable. All you got to do is just right click, rename it again and slap dot ISO after it and it'll become usable. Okay, so you are not allowed to do full disk encryption without some form of uh, a rescue disk without some form of protection so you've got to do this you've got options you can use a USB key you can burn this to CD uh, but either way you need to create a rescue disk make sure that it's off the system so that you can plug it back into the system via CD or USB have it verified in the event something should go wrong if your system becomes corrupt or your encryption gets damaged and you're unable to boot this will say this disk will save your life so it's going to be a little bit different for me of course because i'm on a virtual machine so what i'm going to do is i'm going to uh how to say this i'm going to basically make a cd put it into my cd-rom drive close my cd-rom drive and verify it this way for those of you i'm going to explain your two options you can either do it with usb and in that case get a software like rufus Oh, I can't spell R-U-F-U-S. Simple little tiny tool. 
and this is it here stick in a USB to your machine click this button here browse to the ISO you just saved click on start and you've just put your rescue disk on a USB for the rest of you use power ISO uh, let me open up this here images okay better this is power power ISO you can pay for it it'll work perfectly fine free so just download the free version stick in a blank CD into your CD-ROM drive which is capable of burning CDs and drag from your desk oops drag from your desktop in here let go the files will load here and then just click on burn and that will burn it to CD once you've got your media it needs to be verified as it says here so stick it into your CD-ROM drive put the USB into your USB key whichever one you want and verify it for me like I said the uh, the scenario is a little bit different so just bear with me I'm gonna fast forward to this now
and let us check if it's in my CD-ROM. Cool, there it is there. So I can go ahead and do my verification. So I have the CD burner. Da -da -da -da. Continue. Okay. Cancel. Next. Verified. Happy days. So now the rescue disk we created has been verified. It's good. It's safe. Happy days. Moving on. Here's the pretest, and this is what I was talking to you about earlier on with Windows updates. Make sure that you don't have any Windows updates pending. Okay, so we don't have any updates to do. Continuing on, I'm doing the, okay, so this here, you're gonna want to either print out or save. And now we're doing the FDE test. So let's get our console open so you can see what's happening. We're going to get pretty much instantly the screen to enter in our decryption password. Okay, so this is exactly what you guys are going to see when you've completed a successful encryption of your disk. Your system will shut down, or when you push the power button to boot it up, immediately after post you're going to get this here, which is basically the, the authentication screen to decrypt your notebook and boot into Windows. So enter in the password that you created. There we don't have any PIN, so just hit enter again. And give it a second to verify and log you in. Okay, so we're authenticated, Windows booting. And we're in, so let's just close that down. RDP in. Okay, so now we're connected to our machine. I'm just logging in through RDP now. And Veracrypt should automatically pop up saying that our encryption test was successful. Let's just give the system a minute to initialize. And there it is. Veracrypt is automatically popped up saying that our pretest has completed. And now we can go ahead and do the full encryption. So this here is basically saying that um, you can use your machine while it is encrypting. You can even shut it down, restart it, pop it back up, and it'll just continue on it from exactly where it left off. So you don't need to worry about um, if the battery runs out or whatnot. I would recommend anyway, during the encryption process, if you can help it, to start it, plug your machine in, and just leave it be until it's finished. And it will take a little bit of time. So there's... Th this here, it's kind of like the info we were looking at earlier on, except in a bit more detail. So um, highly recommended that you print this off and you basically sellotape it to the disk that you created for your rescue disk. And let's move on with the encryption. So now we're doing the, the we're doing exactly what we saw with the pretest, but we're going to do the end result, the live encryption now. Okay, and here you can see it started. Now, on your computer, it'll be an awful lot faster. This is a little bit, well, it, it's actually significantly slower on my machine just because of the, the virtual setup that I have. So when you see these, this one to three hours thing, just ignore it. It, it should be a bit quicker on yours. But in any case, it will, t it will take time. And um, best thing to do is just to let it run, leave it be and let it run. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, should I pause or should I let it go on? All right, I'm going to pause and I will resume when it's near or completed.
Okay, so as you can see, our system has finished encrypting. This is what pops up when it's automatically done. So I'm going to click on OK, finish. And then to give you guys a live preview of what's going to happen, I want to do another restart. So this will be the first time I've done the restart with the actual system encrypt. This, this is not a test. This is the actual, this is what's going to happen for you every single time you power off and power on. So let's switch our machine off. Um, let's switch our machine back on again and let's get you the console. So instantly you can see, I'm just going to do a reset to, to give you a bit more of a an action preview. So here you go, instantly it goes straight to the authentication and we're going to put in our password. So I need to click in, password in, we don't have a PIN and let that authenticate okay And there you have it. We're logged in. System's fully disk encrypted. No problems, no issues. So if you guys follow this, the instructions like I've shown you, in no time at all, you'll be able to do it. Piece of cake. Easy. If it didn't work out for some of you, just send me an email. But I doubt you'll have any issues if you follow the steps exactly as they are. And uh, yeah, thank you all for watching. And if you're happy with this free technical support I'd ask maybe you consider to donate you've got my email address I'll send it to my PayPal account thank you all for watching take care and bye bye